Broken Memories is the story about two men, uh, a father and a son, who are at a crossroads in their life. One is forgetting everything, and the other is trying his best to hold on to everything. Dad. So the first thing we see is Rance Howard's character, Jasper Jeffries, off fishing in the middle of a lake. But he thinks he's fishing with his brother Marvin, who's been dead. Ivan Sergei is the perfect Levi Jeffries. The son of Jasper. He's sort of our our eyes for the audience in this story. He's, he's the person that we see all the other characters through. I, I think Levi has a lot of trouble letting go. He's suffering with Alzheimer's, and his fear is that he might have to send him to a nursing home. Jasper, where are your pants? Hmm. This is something that uh, Levi has promised his father he would never do, because his father had to do it to his father for similar reasons. Where we set the film, uh, which, which was on this farm that was, that was going dry, that was going old, that was, that, that was in a way a metaphor for what was happening to, to Rance's character. As the story progresses, then we bring Maggie in, you know? And Maggie is literally this, like, ray of sunshine. This is Jasper. As soon as Jasper sees Maggie, in his mind, he believes that is his late wife, Sylvie. Sylvie, I missed you so much. Oh. Once this woman steps in and you have this triangle of, of a father thinking this is his dead ex-wife and a son meeting a woman who is actually uh, tugging at his heartstrings, it starts to open up all of the floodgates. Levi. You were gonna get someone older. I think her spirit, not necessarily her look, but something about her reminds him of his deceased wife that was the love of his life. She's not old. Look, look, look at her. She doesn't look old. I think there's a beautiful part of what Jasper was experiencing, and that is, you know, forgetting a lot of things that weren't important, but remembering the beautiful things. <sighs> You're wearing me out. <sighs> See, boy, if you can't outdance your woman, She's not going to respect you. <laughs> how can I follow that? She's a beautiful woman. I'm really uncomfortable. I don't even know how to act around this woman anymore. I haven't been with a woman in a long time. Just wondering how you liked it here. I do really like it here. Levi doesn't want, he doesn't want to let that go on. Shut those lips and come on down here and help your mama and me. A little work wouldn't hurt you at all. Do you understand? That's not mom. This is Maggie. Maggie, she's the help. And Levi's trying to hold on to everything that he can, every memory that he can, every part of this family that's just slowly getting broken away. Jasper, no, that's not mom. Mom's dead. All right, she's not coming back anymore. It's just me and you now. Watching someone trying not to be angry is a much clearer communicator to an audience of somebody that's really angry. Um, watching someone trying to control their anger is how you understand that they're angry and something we can all relate to. This movie does have this really like lighthearted, hu humorous element to it because in, in real life, People that are suffering with Alzheimer's, they do some funny stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, at times, uh, he, 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 he has fun. Oh, Mr. Jeffries. Darling, call me Jasper. Rance just did such a beautiful job with dealing with the Alzheimer's situation. You take away my keys so I can't drive? Now you want me to quit walking, Marvin? He was actually better than what my imagination of Jasper was. He brought so much more to the table. I had some scenes where Jasper's realizing that something's going wrong. S -S Sylvie, I I'm scared. I, I, I can't keep it straight. Mama? You're young. 
and I'm not. How could that be? You can't buy that kind of performance. You can't, um, you can't create it. You can't manufacture it. He walks around as Jasper. We like to get our feet wet and just leave the earth for a while. We definitely tapped into the male emotional side between a father and a son. And that dynamic came across in the film. That dynamic came across on the set. And I believe the dynamic continues after the movie between them on a personal relationship as well. We're lucky our family loves each other. You know what my daddy always said it takes to make a good family? Trying. I think there is a, a definitely a, a chemistry uh, between uh, Ivan and I. Kelly Grayson uh, plays Maggie. And the great thing about having Kelly do this is in, in real life, Kelly is, is sort of like a, an angel. I, I think we better just leave them the way they are. All right. Well, how about if we do something subtle, like just move a couple at a time, you know, just take it. Don't, don't touch. <gasps> the Maggie character is a, is a damaged character. I think for her, it's the journey of self-discovery. He got performances from her that, you know, I don't think we've seen the likes of. Serena is a firecracker. She's a beautiful woman playing my sister. So that was always a little interesting. It's just the cycle of life. Parents have to go before their children. He's not dead, Sarah. I know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's, it's good that he's in a better place. Shut up. We're... Shut up! Shut up! You shut up! She's turned her back and, and let her brother handle everything. Um, and I think that deep down, she feels really, really guilty that she's not there. I think she hates herself for it. She allows herself to find the three dimensions in a character that could otherwise be taken by a, a lesser actor and thrown away. And in comes Iris, who is the cousin of Levi. Hey, Uncle Jasper, how you doing? It's me, Iris. Iris, you look big. Pregnant, can you believe it? You know the father? All right. I would say she's kind of like the new matriarch of the family. She does do like a lot of orchestrating and a lot of maternal care. Kind of serves as the person who sees what's going on behind the scenes. Levi Jeffries, get over your stupid self. Your father is still alive, and I can tell you that he needs you more now than ever. It is a personal story for me. Frankie Lauderdale is the writer of Broken Memories. She had already laid out such a beautiful blueprint of a story about this fragmented family. What she put on the page was amazing. That's what, that's what allowed us to be there in the first place. If we wake up every day brand new, are we no longer who we were the day before? Are we just made up of the memories we hold on to? We had the great opportunity to have David Williams create our score for this movie. And I am forever grateful to Clint and Ron Howard for that because he introduced us to him. Yeah, I couldn't pass it up. A film like Broken Memories is not an over-orchestrated film. We were looking for something more natural, something more light, something more acoustic. And he's just, he's been nailing it on the head and I'm really, I'm really happy about that. You know, we have a great script. We have great words that are spoken with great actors. But I wanted to go beyond that and tell those things that are not being said. And that's the magic of music. I think for this film, we, our approach was to keep it intimate. You know, if you wanted something like this, all you had to do was ask. I also think that, that Michael, the director, did a superb job of uh, telling the story given the schedule that he had. Um, and, and he used sort of very well those moments that he chose to put on film uh, to then tell the story of these, of, of these sort of broken memories and of this family piecing itself back together. And you know, he has this really amazing ability to have a thousand things going on, but be super chill, which is really a gift. Michael encourages creativity. 
He is truly an actor's director. He lets you play, and that's what we all want to do, right? Uh, Cassie Cruz was kind of the, the bones of the project, I would say. I mean, basically everything that needed to get done had to go through her in one sense or another, as well as she was acting in it. Oh, those look heavy. Beautiful Carla. What are you doing here, Buck? Well, I called, but nobody answered. Oh, well, you get the same response. Ouch. She is so energetic, and she is so alive, and she so believes in the project that she makes everyone else believe in it. I don't think she sleeps, Cassie. I think she actually just eats and lives. To be able to work with Gary Levinson on a movie is a dream come true. Gary Levinson, boy, it's hard to, it's hard to not be impressed by experience. He's worked on so many great movies. Saving Private Ryan, The Patriot, Jack Reacher. You were talking earlier on about sort of the bigger budgeted films I've made, and I, I, there are not many films I've made that I'm as proud of as this. And it all really worked out so well. The, the town, the setting, just the kind of the feel of the movie that Michael Worth was going for, and that Frankie Lauderdale was going for in, in her writing. I knew when we were making the movie that we had a really emotional, connected movie about family. And that's really what the film is sort of about, is about family and generations passing on and, and letting go. Hello. Do I know you?